All right, children. So here we are. Um, podcast. I believe this is number seven, six or seven. I don't even remember now. I think it's seven. I've lost count already. Um, so today's topic is going to be about um, charities. Uh, mainly, these charities I'm going to talk about are ones that I have either donated to, um, helped raise money for, or know somebody who is affected by this charity or someone who is a part of this charity. Um, so these are, let's see here, I'm trying to think, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight charities, um, that I will be talking about here in this podcast. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly why I decided to go for this charity. Um, like I mentioned in the last podcast, I'm obsessed with the Gleason family, and um, <laughs> they have one, well, yeah, the, the family has one big charity that they do a lot of work with, and um, it's pretty cool. So, I'm going to mainly start with the big charity that the entire Gleason family, as far as I know, the entire family is involved in it, and uh, a couple other charities that, again, I've either um, been a part of helped raise money for, and so on and so forth. So, the first one is Immaturity for Charity. Um, Like I said, this is the Gleason family charity mainly. Um, What they do, and, okay, first, how I found them. Uh, Yeah, like I said, obsession with the Gleason family. I uh, was looking at videos that Donald Gleason, who played uh, Bill Weasley in the Harry Potter movies, his father, Brendan Gleason, who is Mad-Eye Moody, in the Harry Potter movies, um, but I was looking at videos that Donald has posted on YouTube, or, you know, video clips of his, whether it's been comedy sketches or whatnot, and also one of his brothers, uh, Brian, is also an actor, and I was looking at videos that he's done as well, and all of a sudden I found this one, and it's called Squarehead 2020, 2025, and I'm like, what in the universe is this video? And then I noticed it was by a channel called Immaturity for Charity. And I was like, say what? Um, so I, I'll put all the links that I've got right here in front of me. I'll put those in links below. I'm um, including Immaturity for Charity's YouTube link. Um, so I'm watching these videos and they're very, very strange. Um, I may even put a video link. In fact, actually... I'll put a little clip of uh, Squarehead 2025 right So that's, uh, the, the two, the, the adult boys were, that was Brian is the one you see at the beginning of the video and the tall lanky one, that's Donald Gleason. Um, but yeah, so they make these videos, um, uh, and they, they do, sometimes they do with their dad. Sometimes the youngest Gleason boy, Rory, is in a couple of them. And it's just some of the randomest, weirdest, funniest stuff in the universe. 
Um, and they do these videos, and at the end of the video, well, here, I'll show you the link at the end of the video. Please donate. So that's what they put at the end of their videos. Um, each one of the videos that they do, it has that. And it's cute. And it's like, okay. And I watched, I think I've watched all the videos now. And I'm like, okay. This is interesting. So I went to immaturityforcharity.com. And I watched, you know, I love, read through what they do. And I watched a video that Donald posted in front of the uh, hospice that the dude, St. Francis Hospital, St. Francis Hospice, not hospital, right, hospice, and um, here's the audio for that, so you can get an idea of what they do, but yeah, they do these sketch videos, and um, it, it, it's just cute, but uh, so th this is actually a link that's supposed to be on their YouTube channel, but oddly enough, I didn't find it until I got to their website, but anyway, um, here's Donald talking about their charity and what they're raising the money for. Hi, I'm Donald. We made these sketches to raise money and awareness for St. Francis Hospice in Rohini. The hospice is a place where people in the last stages of cancer, AIDS and motor neuron disease are cared for and afforded dignity, respect and compassion. I saw firsthand the amazing work of the staff as they cared for my dying grandparents. They really are amazing people. The hospice doesn't charge for the exceptional work that it does. Yet despite the huge amount of volunteer work which takes place here, it still costs over €250,000 a month just to keep in operation. Everyone on this show worked for free, so all proceeds from the sale of the show and from your donations will go directly to the hospice, and to support a new unit in Blanchardstown which is ready to open but can't afford to do so. If we make you smile or laugh or feel good, or even if you hate the sketches but like the work that we're trying to do for the hospice, please consider giving however much you can afford to a charity which desperately needs your help. Thanks for listening, enjoy the show, and please go to this website and donate if you can. So yeah, so that's what they do. Um, on the website here, it says so far they've raised 65 euros, 65,000 euros. Um, mind you, that's been a long time. Um, and yes, I have actually donated to this charity. I'm not going to say how much. Uh, and you can go to the website and see. The fun part is, yes, it is in euros. So uh, you do kind of have to, if you do want, if you're an American and want to donate. Um, it is kind of weird because you have to do a conversion rate. It's like, okay, let's say you want to give 20 US dollars. Well, uh, <laughs> You do kind of have to go, okay, euros to dollars is this amount, so I'll give this many euros. Um, it is very weird. Um, I, think I was kind of hoping I, I'm on their website. Um, I was hoping to find a total amount. They have raised a huge amount. Um, so that's why it's fun with the amateur for charity. Like I said, it's a really good cause. Um, it's for hospice, you know, house, and it's a really good charity to get, and unfortunately I can't find the totals to see what they've raised so far, but there's some, you know, pretty big amounts there. Um, we have the cast and crew. It's fun. Just go on their website, watch Donald's video, and also click the link to the YouTube channel. Uh, it, it's an amazing stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, immaturity for charity. Uh, again. Click the link below and you'll get, you know, link to their website and the YouTube link. Which brings me to this next um, charity, which unfortunately I cannot pronounce the name of it because, well, its name is in Gaelic. Um, again, this is a Gleason sponsored um, charity. Brian Gleason, who is my current love interest. Um, He's adorable. Uh, I'll put a picture right here. Isn't he adorable, ladies? Um, <laughs> there's actually a picture that's a, that has um, a picture of Donald and Brian, and has a bar over Donald's face that say, yeah, he may be cute, but his brother's eyes can impregnate you with just a glance. And yeah, if y'all can see right there, yeah, he's, he's pretty. Um, 
but there's a video I found of him that he talks about this project called Let's Go Mental. Um, and I guess that's what this Gaelic phrase is. Again, the links are below. Um, but this group is pretty cool. Um, it mainly, this is, yeah, 31 youth councils across the country giving young people a voice on local services and policies. Um, the core program of Let's Go Mental centers on young people identifying prioritizing and progressing topics important to them. Our members then try to influence local decision makers to achieve their desired outcome, impact, or change. Every Let's Go Mental uh, annual general meetings in September or October to which young children and young people which children and young people are invited from local schools and youth groups. Attendance at these range from 80 to 150 young people, depending on the size of the city or county. Um, at the AGM, the young people work on identifying the topics of most importance to them. Um, and it's, it's a pretty cool thing, and I think it's amazing that they, they, they really understand and appreciate that children really do have a voice in all of this. Um, and I believe, unfortunately, there's, it's hard to really go through their uh, their website. Again, not being able to speak Gaelic. Most of it is in English, mind you. But there's a few things in here. I'm just like, okay, wait, how do I find what I'm looking for? But um, Brian is, I think he's he's somewhere in their, uh, their board. So it's pretty cool. I think that it's it's awesome that he's getting involved in this and there's there was a video of him talking about sorry I couldn't make the uh luncheon that they had. So that's pretty cool that he's involved in this and I haven't looked too much into it sadly. Um I only just recently found out about this. So again, if you're interested in you know, the children of Ireland pretty much, um, especially if you got any family or friends in that area check out this link, um, check out the second charity and group and, you know, get involved if you need, um, looks like they do have events and such, so check that out, again, links below, um, and see what kind of work that they do, it's pretty cool. Um, speaking of children, on to my next charity, um, so, next charity is Victory Junction Gang Camp. Um, Victory Junction is one that I have, um, I, I would want to do more with, but have been involved with in, um, a slight degree. I've actually got to go out and tour the grounds, the, the actual camp itself, off season. Um, uh, it's an amazing place. Uh, if you don't know anything about Victory Junction, it is involved with NASCAR. It is big, one of the big um, charities that NASCAR is involved with. Um, it is a um, Paul Newman camp, if you know what those are. But pretty much these camps, they take um, disabled, handicapped children, whether mentally or physically, and they give them a week of being a normal child. Uh, they have, each week is specific illness or handicap. And... They let the kids go fishing, um, horseback riding, zip lining. Um, they do go kart racing. Uh, they even have like a game room where they can do arcade games. They actually have a um, one of those racing simulators. And yes, the NASCAR drivers do go up there and talk to these kids quite often, as much as they can. Um, it was founded by the Petty family. In fact, the uh, King Richard Petty, if you guys know who the King is, his grandson, uh, Adam Petty, who died sadly in 2000, he found this property and he fell in, he visited a, um, Paul Newman camp and he said, I want to do one. I want to take this property and I want to turn it into a Paul Newman camp. And it was a property apparently that Richard had owned. And he went, okay, it's yours. And so now, unfortunately, he never got to see 
the camp finished because shortly thereafter he died um, on track. But his parents, uh, Linda and Kyle Petty, have done an amazing job getting it up and running and continuing his uh, his dream. I mean, it says, Your Victory Junction, founded in honor of Adam Petty. Um, I mean, this is amazing, the, 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 the stuff that they do at this camp. Like I said, I, I got to go out there and they do rock climbing, zip lining, like I said, um, all kinds of stuff. And what's really cool, and, and oh, the biggest point is at no cost to the families. They will even go so far as to um, pick up the kids. They have uh, several vehicles that they do it, including a gigantic pink pickup truck donated and signed by the one and only Taylor Swift. Um, yes, the Taylor Swift. She donated a truck to them, and that helps them, you know, haul around um, stuff. Because, I mean, they've got, they've got a petting zoo. They, oh, it's amazing. You know, they have cabins that the kids stay in, and each bunk has a handmade quilt done by the locals or whoever just donates them. Um, and it's, oh, it's amazing. They even have um, quilted teddy bears as well, and it's just beautiful. One of the other cool things that they also do is they do uh, family weekends or uh, sibling weeks where siblings of the sick kids can go and spend a week at camp and have fun um, mainly because a lot of times they say with um, these sick you know the special needs kids whether they're handicapped or whatnot um, that kid tends to get the bulk of the attention especially from the parents and other people feeling sorry for that kid or you know all mom and dad's money and time and everything is spent on the sick kid and it kind of sucks. So, to honor the healthy kid, they, you know, give them a week to feel special, too. And I think that's that's really cool. Again, free of charge. It's mainly paid for by, really, NASCAR. Uh, a lot of NASCAR drivers are involved. A lot of them who watched Adam grew up, grow up or the ones who grew up with him. I know Dale Jr. is a big supporter of... Uh, this camp, as an Earnhardt name completely, is actually not on anything in the camp. In fact, you didn't hear this from me, guys, but uh, they said that there was one day, and when we did the tour, they said there was one day that um, all of a sudden this hauler showed up at the gate, and it said JRM on the side, and they're like, uh, guys... Does anybody know about a shipment from JRM? No. No. Okay, let them in. They had a, you know, really entire tractor trailer full of uh, merchandise from Junior Motorsports, which is Dale Jr.'s race shop, that they donated to the camp to sell, use, whatever. He, you know, they just had it shipped over to the camp, no questions asked, no money, no nothing. Just take it, shut up, and let's go. Um, and Junior is, is one of those very quiet contributors. He, and, and like his father before him, they're the kind that just, you know, slip you a 20 and pretend like they never saw you. Um, and uh, that's <laughs> more details on that in another podcast when I talk about my time on the streets. Um, yeah. My, my encounters with Earnhardt's and their generosity. Uh, but yeah, Victor Junction is an amazing camp. Like I said, it's one of the Paul Newman camps. I don't have a link to that, but I'm sure there is somewhere around Victor Junction. But either if you like, uh, there is a link on Victor Junction's page to donate to them. Or you can even, I know they used to, I don't know if they do anymore, but you could buy some stuff and... Uh, it went to the proceeds. Um, I don't. Looks like they don't have the store anymore, um, but they used to, uh, and it's cool. But yeah, you can go and donate to their page, or if you don't want to donate to this one because you don't care about NASCAR uh, or whatnot, check out see if there is a Paul Newman 
camp near you and join. Uh, I mean, go and donate and have fun with it. Um, but yeah, check it out. So, speaking of the Dale Jr. Foundation, um, Dale Jr.'s donations. Yes, he has a donation, or a foundation all on his own. The, the Dale Jr. Foundation, again, link below. The Dale Jr. Foundation um, actually, last I checked, supports three different charities on its own. Um, oh, wow. They do a lot more now. Shoo, doggy. Uh, <laughs> I just look, I look at the bottom, it's like, who we support? Well, but dang. Um, the Dale Jr. Foundation, like I said, donates to a lot. I, I thought it was only a few. It used to be just Make-A-Wish, Victory Junction, and, um, the Oak Ridge Military Academy, where Junior and Kelly, his older sister, um, did go to, um, oh, there we go, um, so like I said, that's the only thing they really they used to do. Now apparently they give quite a bit more. Um, again, you can see the link. Uh, I'll post the link to who they support as far as Junior's link. Uh, one of the cool things, like I said, they used to do Make a Wish, and Junior does a lot of Make a Wish. Uh, he grants a lot of wishes. Um, according to this, he is as of January this year. Dale Jr. has granted 234 wishes. So that's really cool. Um, he gives to uh, the Ronald McDonald House of Charlotte. Because, yes, he does live here in North Carolina. In fact, I know exactly where he lives. No, I'm not giving you the address. I don't need the address to it, but I do know how to get there. Um, Levine Children's Hospital, who is the you know big children's hospital in um, Charlotte, uh, he also gives to the Mooresville Soup Kitchen. And, yes, I know that one uh, firsthand, actually. Me and my mom, when we first moved down here, again, that's to be, <laughs> uh, this is another podcast, but, yeah, when we first moved here, we ended up not doing so well. And we ended up having to use the soup kitchen quite a bit. And there was actually one day I went over there. Mom had to work because I hadn't got, I was still in limbo with Walmart. Again, long story. I'll get that on another podcast. But the lady who who owns and operate, well, she used to operate. Now she's just the founder of it. Pulled me into her office. She goes, "Come here. I want you to have first dibs on this." It was a box full of uh, Dale Jr. hoodies, sweatshirts, jackets, you know, stuff. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" She said, "I know you're a huge Dale Jr. fan. I know you and your mom are." dealing with some stuff and I want you to have first dibs on you know this box and I'm just like <gasps> so we have a pullover and a um like a well we got a hoodie and like a pullover fuzzy shirt that me and mom swap and I forget I think I've got the I've got the fuzzy pullover she's got the hoodie uh so yeah I do know junior helps at the Humane Society of Iredale County Iredale County North Carolina is the county which Mooresville is in and that he lives in. I do not anymore. Uh, Special Olympics, North Carolina, he donates to Christian Mission Food Pantry. Again, a group that has um, helped me. And Iredell County, Stop Children Abuse, he helps as well. And he does several more. Um, Dale Jr. is an amazing guy. I've never gotten to meet him. I have gotten to meet a good chunk of his family, but yeah. So that's the Dale Jr. Foundation. They do a lot. And I'm already noticing I'm going way. Um, <laughs> I'm easily going to break my 30-minute mark, but this is a good one to uh, go over the mark for. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually jump what I've done. Speaking of Levine Children's Hospital, uh, Walmart has been a big supporter of the Children's Miracle Network once a year, I'm sure you guys will have probably noticed if you've ever entered a Walmart around the months of May and June. And that's when we corporately wide do our Children's Miracle Network campaign. We do, with Children's Miracle Network, Walmart partners with them to raise money for the local children's hospital. Uh, which I know in good most of Indiana, we raise it for uh, Riley's Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. Because I've got a pin when I lived in Indiana. Um, the Nashville 
Tennessee area raises it for Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville. And the Charlotte metro area raises money for Levine Children's Hospital. I, I'm not sure about the other places. Uh, and I know there's another children's hospital like Greensboro, Winston, Salem area that that area raises the money for. Um, but you check out, go to your local Walmart. They'll, I'm sure they've got the gravity well right at the door to tell you which children's hospital they do the donations for. But it, our donations go through Children's Miracle Network, which is an amazing charity. Again, link below. Pretty much, and I've gotten to tour now Levine Children's Hospital twice and, and learn about what the money goes towards. The first time I went, we actually got to see a preemie incubator and right there is the signature balloon of Children's Miracle Network. And they said, yeah, that machine was bought by your donations last year. Um, and it's really sweet. And I mean, like it goes towards incubators, um, warming beds, these warming, like it looks like a crib, but it's almost, you know, entirely glassed over or partly glassed over plastic um, that help these babies because if they're way too early they need to still keep warm um, and we also they have blankets that are donated by people uh, we also pay help pay for um, the blood pressure cuffs the tiniest blood pressure cuffs in the universe for preemie babies in tiny diapers uh, they said every year they get an email from Children's Miracle Network saying so what do you need? What supplies do you need this year? What do you guys need from us? And they give them the list of all the money, all the you know equipment that they need. And then Children's Miracle Network buys them the equipment or gives them the money to buy the equipment. And all that money that, that they get to buy that equipment comes from the donations through Walmart, uh, from stores all in that area. And it's it's amazing the the things that they need. I mean, like diapers, blood pressure cuffs. I said those incubators. Um, I mean, there's just so much stuff that they do, and that they need. And one of the big things with a lot of the children the children's hospitals is they hardly ever charge families for these things because it's not the family's fault that the child was born way too early or with this defect. So it's it's a big thing, and uh, some of the money that we raise goes just to that, just to help these babies live and not having to put more and more pressure and financial stress on the parent. And speaking of sick babies, a charity that I have actually been to one of their walks and has raised and have raised money for, I did it, not this, uh, you guys have seen the vlog for it, um, the March of Dimes. Uh, it's an amazing organization. Again, they're like with Children's Miracle Network, they're a little bit more uh, like, you know, a few steps before that. They're about keeping the babies healthy and, and you know, helping the moms to have full term pregnancies and healthy babies. So not only is it about helping the babies once they get here, but helping the moms who, you know, are having like preeclampsia or, or they're fun, you know, and they're having um, troubled pregnancies. This is to help the moms also to have, you know, make a smoother transition with their babies. Um, so yeah, March of Times is amazing. Again, links, all the links are below. Um, March of Times, it, it's, it's been around for a long, 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 long time. Uh, and they actually did use to collect it in dimes during March. So it's, it's a great, uh, charity as well. Like I said, they're very much, them and Children's Miracle Network pretty much go hand in hand. They're all about where Children's Miracle Network's, again, children's. It's it's about kids, you know, once they come out. But March Dimes is, you know, focuses more on getting the babies born healthy or, you know, dealing with them extra preemie. They, they do work together quite a bit. Another charity that I have attended uh, one of the events and has raised money for is uh, Take Steps, uh, and this one's for Crohn's and Colitis. Uh, I actually went, a friend of mine, she was obsessed with this band, who one of the members has Crohn's, and so in honor of him, we went on the walk. Uh, since then, I mom has actually told me that my grandma had Crohn's and Colitis, and a girl who I used to work with 
um, is also suffering with it. So it has definitely been a big um, issue for me, and I, I happily raise money for it. And will unfortunately, when they have the walks, it is. Um, uh, but no, it's it's you know, it's still cool. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to go the last few years. Because, well, heck, I think last year, the walk was around the same time I left for Minnesota. See, that didn't work out so well. But um, it's a great charity. Uh, again, they do walks all over the country. So check it out and see if there's one happening in your area. and Or if you want to just, you know, donate. It's a great cause. Um, if you don't know what Crohn's and colitis is, Crohn's or colitis, really, they're, they're stomach diseases that that are just not fun. I, I don't know the full details, but people who suffer with them really suffer. I know, like, I have IBS, and it's not fun. Uh, and Like I said, my friend at work, she has to fight with it, and I, I've seen her in pain and frequent trips to the bathroom and everything, and it is, it's not one of your nicer diseases. Not that there are many nice diseases out there, but, yeah, Crohn's and colitis is not fun at all. And last and definitely not least at all is autism speaks um which again i probably should have put it earlier because they tend to do a lot of work with um nascar a lot puzzle people if you may <laughs> you may know them by um autism speaks is a great charity and foundation um they do a lot of research in helping families with autistic kids and helping autistic kids be regular kids. Um, they also do a lot of research on what causes autism and just all kinds of stuff. Again, it, it's been one of the bigger ones, so not really a big need to describe them, but they're a big one that I've been involved in. Um, I haven't done so much of actually going to their events. I bought some merchandise to support them. Plus, um, I don't know if I've really talked about it yet, but uh, a friend of mine in California, her son has Asperger's, and so it's a big, you know, charity that would help someone like him. Um, I don't know if they've actually talked to people with Autism Speaks yet or not, but I know it, it's a good charity for not only the kids who are dealing with these issues, but uh, for the families who are having to deal with these kids with these issues. Those are the big charities that I've I've either been a part of or have learned a lot about. And there are amazing charities to work with and to learn about. And, and they, they do absolutely great work. I mean, it's, it's rare to find a charity that's, you know, we're raising money to beat dogs, you know. Th those charities usually don't last very long. But yeah, so uh, if you got any questions about those charities, check out their links below or message me in the comments and I will happily answer any questions I can on it. I, I really, some of these I just, I don't know a lot about. I, I wish I did, but they're all amazing, amazing charities. And I, I hope to do a lot more with them in the future. Who knows? But like I said, th th they're great people. And like I said, I've worked with the Take Steps and March of Dimes and Children's Miracle Network. I done a little bit sort of with the Jill Junior Foundation, but not a whole lot. Um, I visited Children's Miracle Net or the Victor Junction Camp. Um, I wish I had done a lot more with them, but I, I do plan on. Uh, that was part of the reason why I moved here was I wanted to uh, work there. Unfortunately, that hasn't quite happened. Um, but who knows, one of these days, I might be able to go out there and donate some time as well as money with them. Um, but yeah, so check them out, and I will see you guys later. Right now, I'm now working on getting the pictures up for this thing, so the pictures you guys have already seen, I'm now collecting off the website. So yeah, I will talk to you guys later with a probably really cool new, uh, you know, topic. I don't know what it is yet, but it's gonna be fun. So... One of the things I keep forgetting to do is um, do a, a, a um, scripture at the end. And I have this really cool calendar that thankfully will help me pull something up. So, um, because I've been posting these on random days, who knows when I'll be posting this vlog. So, I'm pulling up the date, October 10th, which is Dale Jr.'s birthday. Uh, so, on October 10th, this lovely calendar is 
quote is, whatever you can laugh at, you can survive. Uh, that, that's, that's pretty cool. I will uh, talk to you guys later. Love. Peace. Bye.